the Seiko 6139 6000X. Now people are going to be like, X? X. The reason why 6139 6000X is that that last number, though that, that thing, 6139 6000 whatever, 61, 6105 8000 whatever, that's, that's called the casing code. And what that does is it tells us the first the movement that's inside the watch and then the case style that it's with. The final digit is the is the region code. The number is the region code. We don't a hundred percent know about all of that region code stuff, but we can tell things by 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 inference by looking at where things were sold and stuff like that. Sorry, this is all dusty. Hang on, just one second for me. This is a very early, and also these sixty-one thirty-nines. I mean, they came in a bewildering number of different cases and styles and all kinds of things. But these, these, this case style is the one that most people think of when they think of 6139s. This, and they also came with three different dial setups in terms of water resist text. Uh, hang on just one second. I'm looking for something here. Not a great example. They came with different levels of water text on the dials. This is a proof marked. There it is. Water 70M proof. That was pretty quickly moved to resist. Water 70M resist. This is a true Pogue, by the way. You might have heard that Colonel Pogue, a NASA, wore one just like this, a 6139 Resist, and he wore these. He wore his on space on Skylab in Skylab. This is mine. It's completely original. Some people out there say that his was a sixty-one thirty-nine six thousand two. That is bad information. It is incorrect. And so, he bought his in the United States. The only code for the gold dials in the United States, North America, was five. And the 6139-6005, which we know his was because of the dial layout uh, and the dial text, only sold in North America. He bought his in North America, and he lived in North America. So anyone who says it's anything other than the 6139-6005 is wrong. Uh, we don't have any evidence that it was a 6139-6002 or anything else. This is the only variant that would have had that. Anyway, so proof, resist. And then no text. This is a pretty beat-up example, but there it is. But no text. No text here. And that happened pretty quickly. This was pretty much only in 19, 1960, 1969, very beginning of, into 1970, maybe. Then these started in March of 1971. No, I'm sorry, actually, potentially February 1971. And they ran to April 1972. And then from then on in North America, it went like this. Now, there is a there is a variant. There is a variant that a lot of people don't know about, and we're going to talk about that now in the next segment. And we're going to in the sock drawer special because you can really see something really great. So, hang on. This is a sixty-one thirty-nine six thousand two silver dial. And it is um, completely original and unrestored. This watch is important because this watch came to me from the son of the original owner. He found it in his father's things. And I could tell at a glance that it was original. You can see the crown is broken off, but the, the gear is still in place. And presumably... The gear and spring are both, I mean, the spring's right there. The gear should be underneath it. This is the correct original bracelet for that. This particular Stalux bracelet, which is correct for this Austral-Asian version of this watch. Stalux made. We can look through this deeply scratched crystal. And you can see the condition of the dial in the hands. You can see that it's original. Even the loom on the pip is nice and white. Buttons are stuck in. That's not unusual because the seals are old. This is a true sock door special. And it's important, again, because 
for a long time people were saying that these these models didn't exist. This is going to be resist marked. You can see the text under the hour hand there. A lot of people said that these models didn't exist. And, you know, until I found my advertisement showing something very similar to this, there's no documentary evidence for them either, no advertisements. Well, there you go. No servicing marks inside the case back. Let me get a... Uh, Yeah, there she blows. That is definitely stuck. I don't want to fiddle with this too much on camera. That is super stuck. She's not running. That's one thing that is very worrying. Hmm. It's extremely weird and rare for one of these things to not run. I wonder if his dad whapped it and broke the escape wheel. Because it should be running right now. There it is, though. That's what the inside of an unrestored 6139 looks like. I'll look at it with a little more closeness, but there it is. These, this is exactly what they're supposed to look like. It's interesting, the silver dials never, ever, ever get the weird black-brown patina marks that the golds do. The golds are the only one that get it. The silvers never do. I don't know why. Pretty cool. That's what original looks like. That is a sock drawer special. The real deal. Super cool. I've owned a good number of these. I've sold them all, but pretty neat. Okay, so that's what that's what original unrestored sock drawer special looks like. Okay, so this is the sixty-one thirty-nine movement. Uh, this movement was used in a bewildering array of watches. Like I said, all the way from you know something like sixty-one thirty-nine six thousand five to other models like the, the first gen 6139 and 6010s, and which are also the 6012s and the 6015s and the 6017s and 6019s. Again, those are region codes. The 6139 is a single register chronograph, which means it is two things. It is a timekeeper, it keeps time with an hour and minute hand, and it also is an optional chronograph, which means it can measure elapsed time. These watches have, the 6139s typically have an internal rotating bezel. So you can measure, like, sort of elapsed time is the idea. And you don't have to run the chronograph. You can, whoops, I have to check that out. That's what I get for not restoring this watch. I need to restore this watch. Anyway, um, that's what we get by, uh, so you have a single register chronograph, and it runs every 60 seconds. It'll push over this minute counter. And that is one minute per, so you can uh, capture up to basically 31 minutes of elapsed time. Now the 6138, which is very much the same movement with a, one additional plate and some other stuff, also has a 12-hour counter up above. Uh, but we don't uh, we don't have that one here. This is a single register chronograph, and as such, it has a good amount of utility. It's a these are. These came in 17 and 21 joule variants. This particular one is a first gen A movement, 17 joules. So the A movement was the one that came first. It was in most of the proof models, uh, like the early ones like this. This is this is a proof 61. No, that's a resist. Oh, that's right. This is that crazy transitional. In the rest of the world, this would be proof marked. Here in North America, it's resist marked. This is a transitional. It's actually a very interesting and rare model. This is a 6139-6019. Its counterpart in the rest of the world would have been proof marked uh, because it's early and it's got the two-part sweep. Anyway, they changed things up. They made the chronograph wheel, the center, uh, sort of the heart of the movement, a little more robust and put on some, uh, gave one some more ability to adjust things. They 
made this into an eccentric right here so you could adjust out slop in the hand room. Anyway, these are automatic only. This is your winding bridge right there. Automatic only, 17 joules, beats at uh, 21,600 BPH. Day and date with a quick set. You can push the crown in like that, and you should, unless, of course, this one is... Let's see what this one's doing. Let's see if it'll turn over. This is a parts movement out of my supplies. So I don't know actually what condition this one's in. Well, that works. The day wheels misalign, but... And the quick set is not functioning. Not quite sure why. The way these work is you push this in and it will, it'll have a little lever and it pushes over these here. They're good robust movements. They have some issues with uh, where the lower mainspring are reports, but that's that's just sort of a sicko thing. They're good, solid movements. If you can adjust and deal with their their quirks, then you've got a good movement. The thing is, they're um, they they can be they can be kind of a bear to adjust, and if they get out of whack, it can take a lot to put them back into place. Seiko had this thing about sort of using springs. They loved using springs. And so there's a bunch of little springs that are all through here. And if the springs get out of whack or out of place, out of adjustment, then these movements will start, the chronograph sections will start getting really weird. But there it is. Anyway, that's a very brief overview of the 6139 Seiko. Okay, thank you.